this episode of Let's Talk. Right, for me personally, it was like constantly just wanting like the acceptance of those around me. So what they thought was like cool are the things that I would want to be. So I started like going in those steps, but then God like would detain me, but then other things would define my identity. And usually a lot of those expectations I'd set for myself were so high that I would never meet them and then I would just constantly be disappointed. Knowing and placing those lines that we believe because of our experiences growing up in our home or at school and replacing it with his truth. We feel accepted and we feel that if we're under the trend, that's who we are. It allowed the expectations that were placed on me by my parents, especially my dad, um, to be a, an amazing student, to, to do all of these things. I allowed those expectations to define me and I convinced myself that if I didn't do those things, I would never amount to anything and I wouldn't be enough. So, um, many times we base our identity on external things to really define who we are inside and who, or who we really want to be. So what do you guys think some of those things are? Accomplishments, what you've done in life and comparing yourself to others. So that's why you would think you're like worthy of things or worthless depending on what you've done, what you yeah. haven't, yeah. your age, what you should have done by now. A lot of comparing yourself to others, right? So that's kind of like the same thing with the age, like, oh, this person did that by this age, so I should be there, right? For me personally, it was like constantly just wanting like the acceptance of those around me. So what they thought was like cool are the things that I would want to be, right? Like um, in high school, I probably had like a ton of girlfriends and it was like a lot of it was a ton. Uh, <laughs> this, this is my future wife right here. Uh, so it, a lot of it was just wanting to be like cool to the other guys. Like, oh man, like he's got a girl or whatever, you know, he was like with a lot of girls. So that was like a way I used to identify myself. Yeah, that also ties in with appearances, like clothing, the way you do your makeup for girls, the way you do your hair, the way your new haircut. Um, for me personally, I, I didn't really, it wasn't really with clothing, it was more of how I appeared to other people as like, oh, being holy or being like the Christian boy or being the family person. When I'm around family and if it's like with friends and family, it's like, oh, like I have to be nice. Um, it really wasn't like with clothing. There was times where I was like, oh, I have to wear this because it's a trend. We feel accepted and we feel that if we're under the trend, that's who we are. Like, if we're under the trend, we are the best person in the world. Yeah, for me, it was like, I would kind of, whatever group of people I would surround myself with, I would kind of get a feel for, for what was accepted within that group and I would become that. So. I, I was like the girl that had to do the most in, in whatever um, scenario I was in. So, for example, in high school, I was like the, the most, the one that drank the most. And like if we went to a party, I was the one that got the most wasted because I just felt like I, need to, I needed to, to do all of that to be accepted in, in my friend group or in the group of, of people that I, that I was surrounded with. And that happened to me a lot too, but with my dad. So I think for me, it was a lot of like, whoever my dad wanted me to be and making sure if it was work, it was like, well, work now. But it was like, you know, school or behaving a certain way or like making him feel proud. So anything he would give out, like bring up in like conversation with my sisters and stuff, it would be whatever I would hear. Say, okay, that's who I have to be to be like a good daughter. So like growing up, like high school, not so much maybe with friends, but it was very like, okay, I want to be a good daughter, so I have to do what my dad says a good daughter will be, or, you know, and then to fit the criteria um, of that. That's also a big thing, like, in youth a lot, and, like, in young people, how we, we build our identity and what our parents want to be. Yeah. And we always find if, like, my parents accept me, then that's who I am. It's a big struggle for us to leave that, because our parents are, like, right now, they're the highest authority right now, right. like, God and then them. Right. If they say you are an A student, then that's who you are. But I believe that just because your title is the title, it's not who you really are. Right. You're not. You're not just an A student. Like your your name and you're a child of God. Like above everything else, like it doesn't matter if you're a business major. It doesn't matter if you're the multimillionaire that you are. It doesn't matter if you're winning billions every minute that passes in the world. Like that's not who you really are. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what people tell you you are, it only matters what God tells you who you really are. I think that's a big thing that you're saying like with, with our parents too, when we don't get acceptance from our parents, that's when we start looking for, you know, from somewhere else. Like for me specifically, 
I, um, growing up, I felt like my, my dad, my dad and my brother, my brother, my older brother had like a great bond. And I always felt like my dad wanted me to be like my brother and me and him are well, similar, but we're like different in, in a lot of ways. And I could never be like him, right? Like I could never live up to like the things that, that he did or the things that he would do when we were growing up. And I felt like for that reason, whether it was true or not, I felt like my dad didn't accept me. So I had to go and find acceptance, you know, in other places. Um, and these are the things that are allowed to shape my identity. You know? In my experience, I think like a lot of the time I, like you were saying, I think Dante, I allowed the expectations that were placed on me by my parents, especially my dad, um, to be a, an amazing student, to, to do all of these things. I allowed those expectations to define me and I convinced myself that if I didn't do those things, I would never amount to anything and I wouldn't be enough, um, I wouldn't be good enough. And so I kind of started um, making my decisions based on what I thought would please everyone around me and never really asking myself like, what do I want? But more importantly, what does God want? Like, where is, what, what are his plans for my life? Um, and, and really being intentional of like making decisions based on that and not on like what people around me are telling me. Yeah, usually a lot of those expectations I'd set for myself were so high that I would never meet them and then I would just constantly be disappointed. So I'm not the great person I should be because I can't accomplish any of these things. Right, yeah. 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 That, that goes like once you're like self-disappointment, it goes even more because like you didn't reach this, now you're disappointed. So you're trying to seek other places. Like it's going to go like now, it's, it was one thing, let's say it's with your parents and it disappointed you, you're going to with your friends and then that disappoints you too. So you just start like, you're not worthy of this. I think Danny was the one that said it, like you're not worthy of this. And so you're not that. Like if your parents don't love you, then you're not a good child. If your friends don't like you and they don't like accept you, you're like a horrible friend. But that's not really who you are. And I think it was Bibi or Mello that taught in One Day in a Life that I saw it in their Instagram and they were like, it isn't what you did in your past, it isn't what you're doing now, and it isn't what happened to you that classifies who you are. Just because you're drinking doesn't mean you're an alcoholic. You might have a drinking problem, but it's not who you really are. You have to like go after that and see what's the problem. But it's not what you do who defines you. Yeah. It's what God says. It. And like I like the song that's called Who You Say I Am by Hillsong. And it's like you're chosen, you're not forsaken, and it says I am who you say I am. I am your child. I am the chosen one from you. Um, he's died on the cross be to save us and to make us his children. Yeah, I definitely think that goes with, with, with the song and everything. It's knowing, replacing those lines that we believe because of our experiences growing up in our home or at school and replacing it with his truth and like being able to like you know when we also don't hear that truth at home or like you know if you don't know where do you know it's where also it happens that they don't know maybe you don't choose to go you know you just don't have you know maybe your parents didn't tell you those truths but it's like replacing that with the truth of God and who he says and it's like a process of not just saying it because in a song you could you know it's hard but it's like taking it to your heart and taking it to God and really processing that of not just like okay you say who I you say who I you say I am but also like um exchanging the things that made us believe and got stuck in the past and going back there and asking God you know show me here and like help me replace that with your truth and it's a process when you find that acceptance in God and you can be yourself everywhere you go then you begin to like find peace in your life. You know, um, I was one person, it was like what you were talking about earlier, like you went into a group of people um, and I did the same thing and you kind of just like morphed into what everyone wanted you to be, right? Like if I was at church, I'm the church person. If I was at school with my friends, I'm that guy. If I was um, with friends from somewhere else, I was whoever they wanted me to be, right? You're like a chameleon. Wherever you go, yeah. you just turn into that thing. But now like I get to be who I am everywhere I go, you know, and whether it's good or bad, whether you like it or not, and, you know, there are things that obviously I still need to work on on, on myself and who I am, but I get to be myself where, wherever I go and I get to be comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's a huge thing, you know, finding that above everything else, God loves me, right, and no matter what I do, God is going to love me, and he accepts me for who I am, so if he accepts me for who I am, I can be myself always, right, because that's the, that, that's the fear. The fear is like if people see who I really am, they're not gonna like it. Yeah. You know, they're gonna reject it. And and 
you don't want to show who you really are because if people see who I am and they don't like it, then it's now it's like for real, like they really don't like me. But if it's this persona that I put on and they don't like that, it's like, all right, well, I can just change it, right? I can, I can put on a different shirt. I can do my hair a different way. But once it's like, oh, I showed you myself and you still don't like it, it's like, okay, like I suck, yeah. you know? Um, but knowing that God accepts you no matter what, you know, it really brings you freedom. Like I resonate so deeply with what you're saying because I think a big part of why we kind of lose our identity along the way is because of the things that, that we go through. Um, the things that happened to us that maybe weren't necessarily our fault. Like, for example, um, parents' divorce or abuse, sexual, physical, verbal abuse. Um, all of these things start to create a sense of shame um, within us. We're, we're ashamed of who we are. And this is, this is, I'm speaking from experience, like things that I went through in my childhood made me believe that that those things define me, that I that because of those things I was worthless or I, I had less value. Um, and so I was so ashamed of who I was that like you're saying, I, I tried to be something else because I didn't want people to truly see me for me because if they saw me, I mean, if I didn't like myself, right. um, they definitely weren't gonna like that person. And if they didn't like that, then I then I had nothing because that approval and that, constant like affirmate those constant affirmations from people were what were feeding me because I had no other source of strength basically um, but I'm kind of like I kind of want to ask what are what are some things that you think helped restore your identity or recover that that identity that you somehow lost along the way you do need to accept everything like kind of like that process of going back accepting like in my case for example a lot of things that happened in my that helped me in my process was that, you know, accepting that God, that unconditional love from God, that he loves me exactly how I am, where I'm, I am, and that he accepts me just ha as I am. Like, because then it's like kind of, okay, you accept who I am as your daughter, like even with my mistakes. And it was like all of that together, like going, being able, obviously as a process, I think that obviously helps a lot. Like it's a reminder of every day going to him. And like, I'm thinking of this as something I would do, I think when we were doing our process together too, um, that I would like stare at the mirror and like literally like those areas that I didn't feel accepted at home with my dad, that helped me recover. Okay, God, you accept me. And then also obviously with you accepting me as I am, you know, and loving me how I am. And it's like, okay, all of that makes up who Melo is and the Melo that God created and the Melo that he, even if I wasn't there where he wanted me to be, it's kind of like, you know, he created me. Like, there's no doubt that I am who he says I am, you know, and that process. Yeah, I think a, a big part of it for me was what you were saying earlier, um, where we replace the, the lies, right, with the truth, right? Um, like, I was, like I shared just a moment ago was that, I, like, I always felt like my dad accepted my brother more. And that was a real feeling that I had, like, but it wasn't true, right? Like, I was able to... Um, like see those moments and, and forgive my father, you know, because it was a real, real feeling that I had, so I had to forgive that. So forgive my father for not helping, or making me feel rejected, right, in those moments and seeing the truth in it, right? It's like him and my brother got along better a little more, like people get along better with other people, right? Like it just happens. Um, but it wasn't that my dad didn't love me or didn't accept me, right? I was able to see the moments where he showed me his love, you know, where where he, where my dad would pour out his love to me or like concentrate on me or try to spend time with me, um, you know, through God. God was able to show me that. So I think a lot of it is just seeing, um, re replacing those lies with truth that we're not accepted, that people aren't going to like who we are, you know, but realizing that God made us this way, right? God made us to be who we are and everything we have inside of us comes from God, like everything that's truly us, right? So knowing that it's God's perfect design, and if it's his perfect design, like who, who can say that it's bad or that it's good? You know, like it's who God made me to be. Yeah. And knowing that truth, like that overall truth is really what, what would help me to like, okay, I'm a child of God, telling yourself that every day. When I was in fifth grade, um, I was about, what, like 10 years old? I think 10, 11, 12, one of those, one of those three years. <laughs> one of those three years, um, that's where like everything started in my life. That was the year where my identity, like, the crisis started. Mm -hmm. So that was when, I didn't hit rock bottom, but that was when, like, my identity crisis started going up, 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 and it was like, people would criticize me for, like, how I was before I was super skinny. I was, like, three feet tall. 
Um, people would criticize me because I have two sisters, so in my house it was literally my dad would work, so it was my mom, my two sisters, and me. So I was like more with what they were. Or people were like, "Oh, you're like so feminine." So that like that started building inside me what I thought my identity was. Yeah. So I started like going in those steps, but then God like would detain me, but then other things would define my identity. So I started going into middle school, and in middle school. Like sixth, seventh, and eighth grade year was like the worst. Like that was the point where it was like the peak, yeah. and it was mostly because I started falling into oh, like I am feminine. So I started falling in those tracks. Yeah. So it all started to me believing the lies that I was going into the gay track. Yeah. And I remember because there was a pastor and he was like, "That's not who you are." Yeah. But like lies are always coming to you, and they're never gonna stop. Like, we believe, like, oh, if I go this way, like, they're going to stop. Like, no, you're here in Miami, you're on I-95, and you're on traffic. Like, <laughs> lies are just coming at you, and my relationship with God wasn't as strong yet. So I was just fighting that by myself mm -hmm. because God is always there. So I'm fighting that, and then it just starts getting worse. So my identity starts in, like, what other people tell me. Yeah. And then it started in my surroundings. So whoever I was hanging out with, that's who I was. Mm -hmm. If I was in church, I was a church boy. Yeah. If I was with my family, now I became a family boy. If I was with my friends, I was them. I had friends around me that were homosexual. Yeah. And my mom and my dad were always being like, oh, like, be careful who you hang out with because some people were seeing me like that. And then those lies, they just kept on going deeper because people yeah. saw me as that. So I was like, I'm finally getting accepted as who I am. Right. But then God was like, that's not who you are. I got suspended one year. I got... Like, one year I didn't get suspended, but they took me out of school and they are like, re like, recapacita, what you're right. doing and, like, what you're seeing. So then I got out of there and then I started high school. I just, I started hanging out with more gay people. Um, I started having more, like, interactions like that. And then it hits a point where my parents find out and everyone finds out about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So God just there decided was, like, like, that's it. I left that school. I left that, like, environment. Yeah. And I feel God changing things. Like, God is just like, like what Melo and Dante and Lena were saying, that you're just restoring all the lies. Like, it doesn't matter if you were lying. Like, all these lies were in you for six years, for seven, or for ten plus years. Like, there's always a truth that's going to, like, replace it. It doesn't matter how big the lie is. The truth of God is bigger than whatever the lie is. Yeah, right. And it's like, if... My lie was that I am gay. If my, the lie was that I like men, if the lie is that you're not a child of God, God just slams it on top and he says, no, you're the perfect creation that I made. And it just takes a lot to just sink that in and just say, I am a child of God. Yeah. I had to hide so many things, and this is one thing that it's like, this is who I am. Yeah, for sure. It doesn't matter what you say about me. You're, it might affect me, but I'm not going to let it stay there. Because that's my truth. So that's just like big for me yeah. and in my life. While you were speaking, I was just thinking of, um, of what Junior has said to us a bunch of times, right? That identity is not um, a discovery mission. It is a recovery mission. And it's so true. And this picture just came to my mind of like, you know, of us like as a painting. It's like we're, we're this like beautiful painting that God made. And then someone like threw dirt all over it, right? And as we're cleaning it up, we're discovering, we're recovering who we are, right? We're, we're starting to restore that painting mm -hmm. to where it should be, to where it was originally. We kind of keep coming back to this point, but it's the ultimate truth here in, in what identity is, is being who God made us to be and knowing what that is. And I mean, a big part of it too is being in relationship with God. So we need to, in order to find our identity, we need to constantly seek God. And as we do that, right, like you started your process and you started seeking God more. You know, when, when we all started our process, we began to seek God more. And in that, God began to show us, okay, this is who you really are. It's not everything everyone has told you for your entire life. But this is who I made you to be. There's something that I, that I want to share, and it's Jeremiah 29, 11. And this is, like, my favorite, all-time favorite verse. Because I remember when I was, like, starting my process, um, I, I had believed so many lies, like we're saying, I believe that there was like no hope for me. I believe that that I wasn't going anywhere. You know that that at this point, like I had lost so much of my identity that there was no going back. There was no like no way that I was going to be able to recover all of everything that I had lost. Yeah. Um, and the I remember one one day 
I was, I was spending time with the Lord and he gave me that promise. He told me, you know, for I know the plans I have for you, um, plans to prosper you, not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And that verse is something that I just like held on to. And I was like, I know, you know, I don't know where I'm going, but I know where I'm going. And, and, and he knows where he's taking me. And it's like, ultimately, that's, that's the only truth that we, that we need, you know. Um, we are his children, and he loves us, and he created us with, with a purpose in mind. And that purpose is not going to get lost as long as we are seeking him and we are, you know, looking to, to restore those lives and replace everything that, that happened in the past with his truth and his love. Just like you said, like, just taking it all in and like where we're gonna be, that's one thing that we have to keep our focus in, like who we are right now and where God is gonna take us. So like that's pretty much identity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a really nice talk. Yeah, yeah it, was good. it was good. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to see more content that Let's Talk is gonna be posting. We hope to see you next week in our next episode of Let's Talk.